Hamza Ahmed is one of the biggest self-improvements YouTubers right now, and he is also known for his unique thumbnails and as a thumbnail artist with years of experience. I will be showing you how to make this style of thumbnails inside Photoshop. Upon first glance at this thumbnail, what strikes us is its resemblance to hand-drawn digital art. However, a challenge arises. Many of you, like myself, may not have access to a graphic tablet. But fear not, for we have a solution in Leonardo AI. And in case you've been living under a rock, Leonardo AI is a remarkable AI image generation website, similar to Midjourney, with the added perk of being free to use. So, our initial step is to adjust the image generation settings to our preferences. I'll begin by setting the number of images to be generated to four. Let's activate alchemy for enhanced results. Additionally, let's adjust the aspect ratio to 916 for optimal image dimensions. Now let's input the prompt. So, our prompt will be an image of a young man, muscular, named Hamza Ahmed, followed by, by Charlie Bowater at the end. This should guide the AI to generate an image in a similar drawing style. Now let's click on Generate. After some time, I've received these images. While they look good, I believe we can make them more similar to Hamza by adding short hair to the prompt. Let's regenerate the images with this adjustment. After a while of generating images, I came across one that looks quite promising. It encapsulates all the necessary details and boasts a very high quality appearance. What's missing here is Hamza's face. We need to incorporate his facial features into the image. So the best solution I've found is to use Remaker website. I simply upload the original image along with Hamza's face and then let the AI work its magic. After a few seconds, I received the image, but as you can see, it's low resolution. To address this, I'll create a layer mask on the image and focus on painting only the face. Next, I'll utilize a website called Pixel Cut to upscale the image and enhance its resolution, giving it a high quality appearance. A few moments later. As you can see, the result appears promising and the image has significantly improved in quality. All right. Let's return to Photoshop and create our canvas with the standard size of 1280 by 720 pixels. We'll name it something like Hamza Ahmed Thumbnail. Now let's simply drag and drop our image onto the canvas and position it in the center. Now, the issue we face is that we need to expand the image to cover the entire canvas. If you're using a version of Photoshop with limited capabilities, you can utilize Adobe Firefly for this task. So, I'll simply export the image in its current state like this and upload it to the website. Next, I'll begin using the brush tool to paint over all the white areas. Then, I'll proceed to click on Generate. So, as you can see, the results aren't perfect, but I believe they suffice for our needs. Now, all that's left is to export the image so we can use it in Photoshop. So, here in Photoshop, I notice there's a watermark on the image. I'll remove it using the Spot Healing Brush tool. However, I must note that I don't particularly advise removing it as Adobe is a reputable company, and including their logo in your thumbnails can be a sign of respect and appreciation. Anyway, let's name our layers for organization purposes. Then, I'll begin removing the background. There are indeed multiple methods to achieve this but I'll opt for the remove.bg website since it's quick and easy to use. And now I won't forget to save the file. Now, the real work begins. First things first, I'll begin by changing the background color to blue. To achieve this, I'll utilize the hue and saturation tool. I'll check the colorize option and then adjust the sliders until the background achieves the desired shade of blue. Next, I feel that Hamza's image is a bit dark. So I'll apply a soft camera raw filter to it to brighten and enhance its clarity. So I'll increase the exposure and shadows to brighten up the image.
Additionally, I might add some texture and clarity to enhance its detail. Similarly, I'll adjust the saturation and apply noise reduction as needed. Great! Now I'll add some glows behind him to make him stand out even more. To achieve this, I'll select the brush tool and choose a blue color. Then, I'll click once or twice behind him to create the glows. Once that's done, I'll change the blending mode to either Linear Dodge or Color Dodge, although I believe Linear Dodge would be better suited for this case. Next, I'll duplicate Hamza's layer and add an inner shadow to him to make the glow appear more realistic. Then, I'll create a blank layer and merge it with the duplicated layer. Using a soft brush, I'll carefully erase any unwanted parts. Now let's create another layer for the shadows. Following the previous method, I'll start painting some shadows behind him, like this. Now, to add more elements to the thumbnail, I'll bring in this graph layer that I found online. I'll resize it to fit the thumbnail. After that, I'll position it behind Hamza and change its color to blue. I believe something like this should work perfectly. To make the graph more visible, I'll add a drop shadow behind it, like this. But as you can see here, the drop shadow has created some black spots. To fix that, I'll right-click on the effect of the graph layer and select Create Layers. Next, as always, I'll begin removing these black spots using a soft eraser. Perfect! Now it's time to add some dynamic elements to the thumbnail. To do that, I'll incorporate some particles. So, I'll drag and drop this particle asset, position it underneath Hamza, change its color to blue, and adjust the blending mode to screen. But, as you can see here, the particles look very dense. To fix this, I'll create a layer mask and invert it using Ctrl plus I. Then, I'll start painting some particles in necessary areas with a white brush. Now, I'll repeat the same process with these other particle assets. Now that we have all our particles in place, I'll drag and drop this TV texture here and make some adjustments by painting here and there to enhance the overall look of the thumbnail. Now all that's left is color correction. So if you haven't seen the last video, you definitely should. We used an online website called Polar, which offers a variety of cinematic color correction presets to choose from. For me, I've already created my own preset before recording the video, so let's apply it. Perhaps I need to tweak the colors here and there to make it look more visually appealing. Also, there's this great option on the website that I like called Chromatic Shift, so let's utilize it. And that's it everyone, this is the final result. I hope you liked it. If you're still watching until now, I have a gift for you. The PSD file for this thumbnail. You can find it in the description below. Just download it and enjoy your PSD. Thank you once again for watching and don't forget to watch this video.